Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have something pretty interesting to take a look at. This is a figure that I actually have the prototype of in my collection, but uh, I've had it now for quite a few months, so I already knew basically what this was going to look like before it was even like really revealed or anything, but uh, it still is... An interesting one and after acquiring the prototype I did want the prototype just because it was really cool but I didn't know if I actually wanted to pick up the figure or not I eventually decided to because I don't know I just enjoy the Schleich line so much even if the figures are never really all that great I still always want to collect them for the most part and this time we have a Quetzalcoatlus from Schleich now they have released older versions of the Quetzalcoatlus in the past, which I felt like were way better than what we see here. This version is interesting. You know, they took a chance on something a little different than what they usually have, which I can appreciate, but I don't know that they've, you know, pulled it off with perfection. Because you can see, we have the ability to actually have our Quetzalcoatlus stand, which is cool, you know, not... Very many, actually, I might be able to put that up. Yeah, there we go. Not very many companies have the ability to get their pterosaurs to stand like this, but Schleich has incorporated a variation of articulation to the figure, which allows you to kind of articulate it into a standing position, which is pretty cool. But uh, again, the figure as a whole also still sort of has a little bit of a goofy look to it and definitely isn't the best version of a Quetzalcoatlus out there. Regardless, what we're going to do now is jump to a closer look and check it out from there. So starting up at the head sculpt of our Quetzalcoatlus, you can see it doesn't look absolutely awful, but it doesn't look great either. There's some decent fine detail within the beak. The beak is kind of like a light yellowish tone, sort of. We've also got the nostrils sculpted out, and you can see some pretty decent looking skin texture, especially as you lead up there into the crest area of our Quetzalcoatlus. You can see kind of like some bumpier scales, finer skin texture as you move down a little bit. You have some okay looking detail there around the eye socket as well. Pretty decent coloration here in the face as well since you have like this reddish tone, then you've got a reddish tone up there in the crest, and then a very dark tone, kind of like a very dark purple it almost looks like that kind of runs down over the top of the head through the eye socket up into the nostril area and then back up and over the crest again and leading down the same side again uh, the same direction I should say you've also got kind of like a pinkish tone here for the underside as well no articulation in the beak or anything which uh, would have been nice but that's okay as we lead back here into the neck region you can see we transition to a white and uh it's a little hard to decipher if that is meant to be pycno fibers or if that's meant to be scale detail. It kind of looks like a mixture of both, so it's a little hard to really tell. It looks okay for what it is as far as the fine detail goes. Again, you can see the throat and everything here on the underside as you move down the course of the neck. As you lead down closer to the body, you can see a turn here in the neck and throat into the body. A transition that's kind of smooth moving into that area as well. And it's a kind of an abrupt transition at the same time that it's smooth. There's a little area here where it looks like we should have articulation. And as you can see, I can kind of move it a little bit, but it, that's really all it does. It doesn't stay. It pops right back. So I don't know that that's actually meant to be an articulated joint. And if it is, mine doesn't really move. We again have the articulation here in the wings, though, which is something that you don't usually see from Schleich. As you move down the course of the body, you can continue to see, again, some fairly decent texturing. We have a very dark gray for the body color. And once you actually move into the body, there isn't really any color variation. I forgot I have this sticker on here. But there isn't really any color variation moving through. You can see that it looks pretty decent for what it is, just not really a whole lot going on color wise same deal here for the underside you can see the detail looks pretty decent as you move down until you get into the feet the feet have a very washed out look to them you can see there's almost no detail within the feet at all even down into the toes there's no nail paint for the figure either as you move out into the wings the wings kind of have some detail to them you can see as we kind of turn it and let the light hit it you can sort of make out some texturing and stuff to it but for the most part, it's just kind of like a rubbery material, which is very flexible. There's a decent paint application to it as you have this kind of like reddish brown down here, but you also have a very smooth application of the dark gray, similar to the primary body color we have going on here for our Quetzalcoatlus. And you see the same thing again when you look at it from up above. 
but you also have some very obvious joints on the figure and that is because you have the articulation but they didn't try to hide the joints at all it's almost very Takara Tomy-ish as far as the way the joints appear but you can't really give the pterosaur articulation or anything upward it does not go you have to push them down so you push them down and then you would be able to have kind of like a flapping motion but then you also then push these up to give it that kind of standing visual and that's how you would articulate it it doesn't have the ability to go down again once you kind of put it back into place you can't really bend it down here either similar to what we saw up there on the upper joint right there you can just bend it up then to give it again that standing visual and it does look really cool i will say that you know i do like the gimmick of the figure and uh it's pretty well done but for the most part it's not the greatest quetzalcoatl list not really the greatest sculpt decent paint job but nothing really to rave about there either as far as a size goes if we have a kind of standing here like this if you want to go for a wingspan at this point you're looking at about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters for a height in the standing position a little over three and three quarter inches closing in on four inches but not quite or close to 10 centimeters but not quite there either but if you want to get an actual wingspan for the Quetzalcoatl once it's sprawled out in a soaring position you're looking at about nine and three quarter inches or around 25 centimeters for a size comparison there is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect A Human Being here next to our Quetzalcoatl list, showing you that it's pretty small overall, not really super huge. For a pterosaur, it's got a decent size, but it's definitely by no means a massive figure. Here is a comparison next to the far superior TNG version of the Quetzalcoatl list, which you can see quite easily puts the Schleich version to shame. We've also got the How Long Good version, which this is repainted to kind of be the Jurassic World Dominion Quetzalcoatl, but you can see again another Quetzalcoatl figure that without question puts the Schleich version to shame again. And then for one final comparison, we have one of the older renditions of the Quetzalcoatl from Schleich, which uh, obviously isn't really that great of a pterosaur either not that great of a quetzalcoatl list but i would say i like that one a bit more you know than the newer one definitely a little bit more lifelike and uh, a little bit better looking overall so this brand new 2023 schleich quetzalcoatl list is definitely not their best work it's interesting i'll put it that way i can't really say that i'm much of a fan of this one i'm happy to have it in my collection but it was actually like 25 bucks on Amazon. I don't know that I really should have spent that kind of money on this. I probably should have waited until somebody was selling it, you know, pre-owned or something to get a cheaper price. Because overall, the sculpt isn't really that great. It's uh, got some okay fine detail, but it also has a lot of areas that doesn't really have nice detailing. Like in the feet, we don't really have nice detail within the skin of the wings. We don't really have nice detail on the fingers or the... Uh, you know, arm basically of the wing. You don't really see anything great there. The entire thing has more of like a skin textured sort of a look rather than picno fibers, I, I think. Anyway, it's hard to really tell what they were going for, which is kind of strange considering their older Quetzalcoatl did have picno fibers. So I don't know why they would go the opposite direction as far as that goes, unless that is their attempt at a newer version of picno fibers. I have no idea. The paint job is okay for what it is. It's nothing super flashy, but decent enough for what it is. It looks, you know, natural overall and definitely the type of coloration I could see on a Quetzalcoatl. The entire gimmick that we have going on here, though, is pretty cool, and I can definitely appreciate that. I do, you know, I like the fact that Schleich was thinking outside the box here and tried to come up with a way where you can get your pterosaur into a standing position from a soaring position and actually have it look pretty decent. It's very obvious, though, that they are articulated joints as they didn't even try to hide it. You know, they went Takara Tomy style with the obvious seams and ball joint openings and stuff, but... It's, you know, kind of cool just because it is unique, but at the same time, the Pterosaur, the Quetzalcoatl as a whole is kind of ugly. If you are interested in grabbing one for yourself, though, I will include a link in the description to where I grabbed mine from Amazon. So make sure you check that link. Go grab this Quetzalcoatl if you'd like to, and also like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.